Hey, what's going on everyone? Vega here for Serpent X Tech. And previously in, uh, on social media, I've been posting boxes or little snippets of what my plans are. Let's talk about what's in these boxes and finally get to those plans that I've been trying to unveil for quite some time, I've been very busy. So these boxes have the branding fog hashing on it. And you can see by the label, C1 dry cooler. Now, if you haven't picked up on it yet, this is going to be my immersion cooling system, all in one system provided by fog hashing. Uh, they are not the sponsor of the video. I did work with them though. And in this container is the dielectric coolant that we need. It's actually the Bitcool 888 from Engineering Fluids. I want to kind of get this all prepared for you. Uh, the game plan as I've been going through it bit by bit. We ran 240 line from the breaker over there to over here where the PDU is. We're gonna have to set up somewhere in this area. Depends, I gotta unbox it and see what I'm working with. So let me go ahead and do that and I'll show you the components as we go. But this is an all-in-one immersion cooling system for more of a smaller operation, maybe the at-home miner, uh, which is definitely beneficial for me here in Florida, which gets really hot. So let me unbox and I'll bring it back. All right, so this thing is packaged with a lot of foam, which is good considering it's got to travel all the way across Asia to the US here. And look at this radiator. This is the dry cooler and very well painted. Uh, the welds look like they're hand welded. They don't look too bad. The beads aren't too crazy. And this thing is beefy. It looks like a dual core radiator, uh, that which you might find on a car. And you know, straight up, like you can mount this, good steel, mount this however you like, you know, on a wall or somewhere. Obviously you got your uh, inlet, outlet, um, and a nice little fan here. Uh, you can see the rating, what's the rating? It's an axle fan, 180 watt, 220 volt, 60 hertz, and that does pull some serious juice. The problem I'm gonna have is the outlet, so I'm gonna have to figure out how to deal with that and convert it. We got aluminum plate fin oil cooler. Uh, there's the ratings, the rated pressure, the design pressure, and the test pressure. Got some other additional information manufactured recently in July. And then here is the all-in-one. Now, there's some stuff in here, so I gotta open up and lift this top panel up, but this is it. This is the container. Here's the, my arm, uh, basically I would say under maybe 22 inches, something like that. I'll get a measuring tape here. Um, front LED screen um, and button, which obviously is there's a startup process. You've got handles on both sides and this is heavy. I'll tell you that right now, it's really heavy. On the back side here, we got where the hoses will connect um, and it looks like power. Let me go ahead and rotate this. Looks like power and ethernet are there on the back, but there's the branding for fog hashing. There's the inside and there's the front. Let me rotate this for us. Yeah, this is definitely a beefy boy. All right, so it looks like the inlet and outlet are clearly marked. As you can see, there is two, uh, what does that look like? C13, C14 uh, connectors, which will work on my PDU. There's your ethernet. So I gotta run power from the PDU to this. And then inside I have two more connectors and an ethernet that I have to run to the ASIC. And just saw this, but there's your airflow, right? So it's pulling in air through the radiator and out this way. So I wanna orientate that probably somewhere over here. It's gonna go into the garage static air area, which is gonna warm up my garage, but uh, I will deal with that ventilation at another time. Let me go ahead and get this lid opened up. All right, so with the lid off, real quick, the lid does have some type of rubber seal here, I guess to help it seal the container that it's in, the outer perimeter. Um, looks like all of these side panels can come off if you really wanted it to. Got some screws on the top, and 
yeah, some screws in the bottom. Here is probably your sensors for your liquid temperature, stuff like that. Uh, for your readouts up front, there's your um, outlets or plugs, your ethernet. And yeah, looks like these are the hoses right here. Yeah, these are definitely the hoses. Instruction manual. And then the ASIC sits down in this area uh, and you fill the fluid. So we got some perforated holes at the bottom to flow uh, the liquid. I'm guessing a pump has to be underneath this assembly somewhere. Yeah, so pump's gotta be behind this panel somewhere. Uh, fluid goes down, gets circulated out and into the radiator and then gets flowed back in maybe through here this opening uh, but we'll have to see once we get it turned on it is solid uh, very solid very heavy as I mentioned so yeah that's the inside of this container good handles on the outside the quality looks really good the, the build quality looks really good uh, obviously it looks like to me they did some testing to make sure everything is up to par because you can see this is not the first time it's been closed up sealed or threaded um, and yeah I mean I like I like the look of it maybe I could fit two very 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 tight but um, I, maybe I could fit two a6 in here if they were the m30s uh, but only one s19 uh, for sure um, but even if I put two in here, that's a lot of heat to dissipate right with the with this small container of fluid when you when you increase the heat or the thermal uh, Output of your devices. You definitely need to take that into account the amount of fluid you have how fast you can flow that fluid um, And other parameters and variables to think of when you're thinking of immersion cooling um, But you know this this will definitely get the job done for my needs. I do have other plans in the future but I just wanted to share this with you. I really think it's a pretty neat setup. I really do like the quality of this radiator, um, the welds, the build, the whole nine yards. Uh, I'd be very interested to see how this thing runs, which we'll do in a future video. I believe that container uh, holds about 30 liters of immersion cooling fluid or dielectric fluid. So I got two Bitcool 888 containers uh, so I'm gonna have a little bit left over um, and obviously you got to account for the ASIC uh, Displacing some of that liquid as well. So you want to put it in here. I'll go through that whole process in a different video Hey quick little interruption inside the little bag on the end uh, that they provided inside the container They do have an adapter, but this is for the EU not for the US or I believe this is for the EU Let me know in the comments um, And then of course we got two little shorty cables for powering inside Ethernet for on the inside two little uh, I think these are adapters I'll look at the instructions but these look like four pin PWM adapters this little guy right here with two sets of hoses I'm not sure what this guy's for it looks like it could be like a little pump thing maybe to help siphon out or I'm not sure again I'll read the instructions when we get ready to set up some extra o-rings and then some type of bracket I'm not sure if that's meant for the radiator or not or the radiator assembly, but we'll have to see. So yeah, that comes in the package that was on the inside besides the hoses. I just wanted to share this with you. Uh, foghashing.io, thank you for working with me and allowing me to get or obtain one of these. Uh, again, not sponsored, but give them a shout out. Check them out on social media and Twitter. And we'll see uh, how this bad boy runs next time in a different video. So that's going to do it for today. Please do me a favor on the way out. Make sure to hit the like button. Make sure to get subscribed and hit the notification bell to stay up to date. So I'll check out various links in the description to help support the channel and what we do here. And I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.